This is the second video for section 1.8 on bin packing and scheduling. In this lecture, I'll be talking about one at a time algorithms. So just to refresh your memory, the bin packing problem gives us a list of numbers called weights. And those numbers represent objects of various sizes that need to be packed into bins that have a particular capacity. And again, the capacity is the total amount of weight that each bin can hold. So the goal is to pack the weights into the smallest number of bins possible. So in one at a time algorithms, we have to decide what to do with each weight in the order that they're given to us before moving on to the next one. So in other words, what we can't do is look at the entire list looking for numbers that match up or that fit together perfectly. We have to consider the objects one at a time before we move on to the next one. So an example where this could be the, uh, the realistic way to approach the problem is if we have objects coming down a conveyor belt, where we can't look way down the conveyor belt to see something else coming. We have to deal with the item as it comes to us. So there's two different one at a time algorithms that we're going to consider. There are many more algorithms to solve these kinds of problems, but we're going to look at looking for the first fit, which means starting with the first bin, check each bin one at a time until you find a bin that has room for the weight. And then we're also going to talk about looking for the best fit, which is to look at all of the bins and find the bin that can hold the weight and have the least room left over after packing it. So we'll talk about advantages and disadvantages of these two approaches. So let's start with the first fit algorithm. Again, the first fit algorithm tells us to put each object into the first bin that has room for it. And we're only going to open up a new bin if none of the existing bins have room for the weight that we're looking at. So as an example, let's say that we have this list of weights and we have bins of capacity 10. So we're going to start out with what I'll call bin number one, and bin number one is going to be empty. Now what I'm also going to be, keep, be keeping track of is how much capacity the bin has left over. Now right now, bin number one doesn't have anything in it, so bin number one has 10 spaces, or in other words, room for 10 if we think of these as pounds or cubic feet or whatever. So the first weight on our list is five, and bin number one has 10 capacity available, so five fits in that bin, so we put five on our list. And now the capacity goes down from five, from 10 down to five. So we put five, let's just say pounds for the moment. So we put five pounds in it, so there's only five pounds remaining. And then we cross the five off of our list and move on to the next one. Now the next number on our list is seven. Bin number one does not have room for a seven. It only has five spaces remaining, so that means we have to open up a new bin, which I'll call bin number two, and we put the seven in there. Now bin number two started out with a capacity of 10, but now it only has a capacity of three because we put seven in it. 10 minus seven is three. And we cross the seven off our list. Now we get a three. So again, the first fit algorithm, we find the first bin that has room for this. So bin number one, starting with bin number one, we say, does bin number one have room for our next weight? It does. It has five spaces remaining. We're trying to pack a weight of um, value three. Five is greater than three, so that means we have room for it. So I'm gonna add three to my list, and then my capacity goes down by three, down to two. Now again, you might notice that, hey, bin number two would have been a better fit, right? That would have been a perfect fit. We would have had no spaces left over, but this is the algorithm, right? So the algorithm says, we are looking for the first bin on our list that has room for it. But you might be noticing one of the disadvantages of this approach. But we're following the algorithm, we're following the steps here, so we cross three off our list. Now we've got a five. And, we, and again, we start at the top of our list. So starting with the first bin, does bin number one have room for a five? It doesn't. It only has two spaces remaining, so we can't put the five in bin number one. Moving down our list. Does bin number two have room for our five? It also doesn't. It has three spaces remaining. Five is bigger than three, so we can't fit the five into bin number two. So since that five doesn't fit into any of our bins, we have to open up a brand new bin. So that's where we put our five. And again, bin number three started with 10 capacity, but we put five pounds in it. So now it only has room for five more. Cross the five off our list. Next number on our list is a six. Six doesn't fit into bin number one. Six doesn't fit into bin number two. Six doesn't fit into bin number three, so we've got to open up a new bin, which we'll call bin number four. And that's where the six is going to go. Cross the six off our list, and what's the capacity of this bin? It started out as 10, but now it's down to four because 10 minus six is four. Now I've got a two. Going back to the top of my list, I see, all right, bin number one, does that have room for a two? It does. So I put two on my list, and now the capacity of bin number one is zero. It doesn't have any spaces remaining. And so bin number one is full. Cross the 
two off our list. Next number on our list is four. Doesn't fit into bin number one. In fact, nothing's gonna fit into bin number one anymore. Doesn't fit into bin number two, but it does fit into bin number three. So that's where we put our four, and now bin number three has capacity that's now down to one. Cross the four off our list. Now we get another four. That doesn't fit into bin number one, doesn't fit into bin number two, doesn't fit into bin number three. It does fit into bin number four. So we add the four to that list, and the capacity of bin number four is again also down to zero. Cross that off our list. Now we've got a seven. Does seven fit into bin number one, two, three, or four? It doesn't. None of those bins have seven spaces remaining in them. So we have to start a new bin, which I'll call bin number five. And again, the capacity of that bin started out as 10, but now is down to three. And we're almost done. We've got one more weight. We've got a four, but unfortunately that weight of four doesn't fit into any of our bins. So we've got to start a sixth bin, bin number six, for that last weight, number four. So this is our solution to our bin packing problem. We've taken all the weights off our list, crossed them off one at a time, and found a way to pack them all. So if we're considering how good this algorithm is, we're think, considering advantages and disadvantages, it's pretty quick to decide which bin to put the weight in, right? If we just go down the list, start with bin number one, go to bin number two, bin number three, and as soon as we find a place that fits that object, we put it in that bin and we're done, and we're moving on to the next object. So this is a pretty quick algorithm. But the disadvantage is something that we saw in that example that we worked on, is that we miss some good fits. We missed some perfect fits by not considering all of the bins. So the best fit algorithm tries to fix that problem. In the best fit algorithm, we're going to put each object in the bin that would have the least amount of room left over after you pack it in that bin. So ideally, that means we're looking for perfect fits. Ideally, that would mean we're looking for a place to put that object where we would have zero left over. But if we can't do that, then we'll want to put it in the place where we have the least amount left over after we pack it. So we're only going to start a new bin if none of the existing bins have room for the object. Okay, so let's go back to the previous problem, and this time we're going to do the exact same problem, but this time we're going to use the best fit algorithm. So again, we're going to start out with a bin number one that's empty. We're going to be keeping track of how much capacity is left over. That's always going to start out as 10 for this problem, because that's the number that they give us. That might be different for different problems. And now we're going to start with a weight of 5. Well, there's only one bin, so 5 is going to fit into this first bin, so that's where that goes. And we've got 5 spaces left over. So cross that off our list. Next up, we have a seven. Seven doesn't fit into bin number one, so we're gonna have to start a new bin, which we'll call bin number two. So, so far, this is starting out the same way as the previous solution. Next up, next up on our list is a three. Okay, so here's where this is gonna be a little bit different. So now we're gonna look at all of the bins that can fit that three, and we're gonna look for the tightest fit for where that three can go. So three could go into bin number one, it could also go into bin number two, but bin number two has less capacity remaining, so number two is where we're going to put, it, uh, put that weight. That's the tightest fit that actually allows that weight to go in there, and so that's going to be where we're going to put that three. So that means capacity of bin number two goes down to zero. Next up on our list is a five. There's only one bin that can hold that five, so that's where it goes, and the capacity of bin number one is also down to zero and cross the five off our list. Okay, now we've got a six on our list. We don't have any bins that can hold anything yet, so we're gonna have to start a new bin. We'll call that bin number three. That's where we put that six. And the capacity of that bin is immediately down to four. Cross that off our list. Now we've got a two. Again, there's only one bin that can hold that two, so that's where it goes. So that's gonna go into bin number three, and the capacity of bin number three goes down to two. All right, now we've got a four. Well, that four can't fit into bin number three, so we've got to put it into a brand new bin, which we'll call bin number four. That weight four goes in there. The capacity of that bin started out as 10, but now it's immediately down to six. We've got another four. There's only one bin that can hold that four. That's bin number four. Oops, fix my color there. And the capacity of bin number four is also down to two. Now we've got a seven. That weight seven is too big to fit into bin number three or bin number four, so we're gonna to have to start a new bin, which we'll call bin number five. And the capacity of that bin is already down to three. 
And then finally, we've got a four, but unfortunately that four is also too big to fit into any of our existing bins. It can't fit into bin number three or four or five because we've only got two, two, and three spaces left over. Four is too big. So we're gonna have to start a sixth bin. Bin number six has to have a four in it all by itself. So this is the solution to our problem using the best fit algorithm. Notice that we used six bins again. So the in that aspect of my solution isn't any better than the previous solution, but we have got it in a different way. So the advantages of the best fit algorithm are that we're actively trying to get these good or perfect fits for our weights. So our thought process is that that should yield us a better answer in most cases because we're looking for these good fits or fits with very little room left over. But the disadvantage is that it takes longer to fit each weight because we're looking at every single bin. We're not just starting at the top of our list and, and putting in the first place it goes. We're looking at every place where it could go and finding the best fit. So that in general takes a little bit longer. Now notice that we call it the best fit algorithm, but that doesn't mean that it's giving us the best solution, right? That means that we're looking for the best bin to put each individual object in at the time. We don't know that the end result of using the best fit algorithm is actually going to be the best solution to our problem. So don't think that word best here means that it's the best algorithm. It's just the algorithm that's based on finding the best fit for each object. Again, the only way that we would ever know that we had the best possible solution is with a brute force method where we consider all possible solutions. So the algorithms that we talked about in this lecture were called one at a time algorithms, which meant that we're looking at the list in the order that it's given to us. And we're not gonna look ahead and try to jump around and try to find these sort of perfect fits. But if we can look at the entire list of weights, then we can be a little bit more intentional about finding those good fits. And it turns out that it's more efficient to deal with the big weights first and fit the smaller weights around them. Again, if you're imagining packing up a house or packing up an apartment, you sort of deal with, or packing a moving truck, you deal with the big objects first and then the little stuff can kind of fit around it. And that works with these numerical problems as well. So we're gonna consider some more algorithms in the next lecture with that idea in mind.